Hello, everybody. Welcome to Familiar, um, the first edition of Familiar for January 2019, and the first one in pretty much forever because I've been completely swamped with school. So today we're dealing with strength and the eights, and um, yeah, I've got a cheat sheet for you. Um, in my Google Drive, and I think I can just, yep, shared my Google Drive with you for the familiar um, cheat sheets. So um, you're more than welcome to download them. Um, I think I've had them edit protected because uh, I think it's really important to give um, credit to where it's due. <clears throat> and speaking of which, um, I just want to welcome everyone. So far, it's just Randy. <laughs> Hi. Um, I just want to welcome everyone to the January edition of Familiar, um, and I just want um, to acknowledge that the uh, the land that I am situated upon um, includes is, uh, is is known as the traditional territories of the Native North Americans, and in this particular parcel of land, um, the territories include the Wendat, the Anishinaabek Nation the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, the Mississaugas of the New Credit First Nations, and the Métis. Um, and it was subject to the Dish with One Spoon Wampum uh, Belt Covenant, which was an agreement between the Iroquois Confederacy and the Confederacy of the, the Ojibwe and allied nations to peaceably share and care for the resources of the Great Lakes. Uh, here in Toronto. Uh, the treaty that was signed for this particular parcel of land is known as the Toronto Purchase and um, I'd like to recognize the enduring presence of the Aboriginal peoples on this land and um, I am just wanted to acknowledge that I'm super lucky and happy that I get to uh, live, work and play on this uh, in this amazing city of Toronto. So in any case, let's get down to business. So I've got a few decks with me, um, including this awesome uh, cheap Chinese deck that I got on eBay for like $8. Um, it's iridescent and it's basically just the, um, the Rider weight version. Um, in iridescent it's pretty cool um, I'm also using because um, I'm not exactly the biggest fan of rider weight uh, I find the the drawings are kind of boring um, so I'm using also the uh, the tarot illuminati um, where did that one go oh, the tarot illuminati um, I made a huge mistake and threw out the box um, it was so dumb. Ever since then, that was like the last box I've ever thrown out because I just think the boxes are so cool. Um, I'm also using the Santa Muerte Tarot. Um, hi, Kelly. Good to have you. Um, so I'm using the Santa Muerte Tarot uh, from um, Los Carabeo and um, Fabio Listriani. Um, the artwork is absolutely beautiful. And um, who doesn't love Lady Death? Um, I thought the Egyptian tarot would be really interesting to um, to explore as well um, because of the Egyptian gods. Uh, Yukioe tarot is really dope because I, I really like Japanese culture, um, so their interpretations are really interesting because even the uh, even the flowers in the background are uh, are important. And, uh, Oddly enough, right on the cover is strength, which would, uh, which is what we're going to be looking at today. And I'm also um, using the patch tarot, at least for interpretation. Um, ah, this deck I, I have my problems with. Um, it's really cool. The graphics are really awesome, but I just I'm I'm. They decided to change the numerology, and that that really gets under my skin. But they have an amazing book, uh, Numerology Be Damned, uh, called the Book of Patch. Hi, Cassandra, and it's uh, full color, and I got the hardcover, um, and it goes into a lot of depth of the interpretations. Um, they lean heavily on the Kabbalistic uh, interpretation. Um, and on that note, I think it's really interesting um, because this uh, number that we're dealing with today, the eight um, and strength, it's it's kind of interesting because in some decks, um, if they're heavily leaning towards the um, 
uh, the Alex, uh, Alistair Crawley's deck, um, then the he he changed position between justice and strength. So that's a little bit of uh, a weird confusion with that. Um, in any case, we're dealing with eight, and uh, strength is number eight, not justice is number eight, just because um, that's the traditional rider weight, and that's pretty much what I go off of. Um, so let's get down to business. Uh, thanks for coming out. Um, just so you know a little bit about me, my name is Sonia. Um, my first tarot deck was the Tarot of Witches. And I was gifted that when I was uh, 10 years old from my sister. And this, I thought it would be really interesting to show you guys. This is actually the first literal book that I worked off of. I've had it since I was 10. And it's completely destroyed. So I just recently bought a new copy of it. And a lot of the times my interpretations when I do readings and stuff is quoted directly from this book because it was pretty eloquent. Um, some of the descriptions. Oh, and also just in case you were feeling generous, um, this is my Litecoin address. If you wanted to flash me some Litecoin, this is the official cryptocurrency of the UFC, in case you were wondering. And uh, this is my Bitcoin address, in case you wanted to zap me some Bitcoins. Um, all right. Enough of that preamble. So, cool. Um, uh, yeah, so we'll start with the number eight and um, the numerology of the number eight. Um, so the number eight is the number of power and strength. And actually, one thing I remember um, from when I was listening to Art Bell like a thousand years ago, um, I remember they had a numerologist on, and she said if – if you, eight is the number of money. So if you wanted to, um, if you wanted good luck with money um, and you had like a, a, a change jar or anything like that or a wallet to put the number eight, to draw the number eight and to put it in your wallet or your change jar. And just because I'm superstitious like that, um, I did it and I don't know, I'm not rich now, but anyway. <laughs> Um, also, I wanted to just uh, encourage you to to chime in with your um, interpretations or with your comments. Um, I totally welcome that, and I'm definitely not an expert. Uh, the reason I started familiar is because I I've had uh, trouble like absorbing the information. So I figure, okay, well, I've got a thousand books. Um, as you can see at the bottom of your cheat sheet. Um, I use a whole bunch of resources and I put together um, the, the information and I just thought, okay, if I teach it, maybe I'll have a better chance of actually learning it. Um, so, okay, so uh, eight is the number of power and strength. In fact, it, it is the tarot card strength in the major arcana. It also denotes stability, wealth, and balance. Um, if you turn the eight sideways, you get infinity. And I do believe on the traditional rider weight, um, our lady strength is wearing the infinity symbol. Um, obviously, number eight. <laughs> um, oh, <laughs> thank you, Kelly. The, I really appreciate um, your uh, your input on the cheat sheets. I I honestly, like I said, like I I was never grown up in a gypsy household. I didn't go to the circus and have a mentor. Um, this is all just me going through books and putting stuff together. So I really appreciate that you're enjoying the cheat sheets and that we can all read along. So, you know, if you, if you're reading and you have questions or if you, you know, you got a comment or something like, let's talk about it. Right. Um, the more interpretations we have for more people then you know, the better our understanding of the card is going to be. Um, so uh, turn the eight sideways and you get infinity, a force that creates as easily as it destroys. Eight is the karmic equalizer. It balances the material and spiritual. It denotes practicality and intelligence. Numerolo numerologically, it denotes drive, authority, efficiency, organization, responsibility, alliances, discipline, and control. If four can be represented by the four legs on a table, eight represents an added layer of stability and ambition. 
Um, it's almost like a higher octave of the stability of the number four. Um, in tarot, eight denotes an understanding of boundaries and limitations, situations and actions that once can once done cannot ever be undone. In all the eights of the tarot, including 18, the moon, there is much to be gained once we get a handle on the limitations of the situation. It also denotes personal power and inner strength, as well as finding your place in the community by doing what suits you to a high level of skill. Fulfilling your life path through your dedication and commitment to your work. So, uh, that's just the... That's just the numerology of the, the number eight. So um, let's get into, I'm going to skip the, um, the different uh, suits for a second and get into strength because I think it's just such a cool card and a really cool concept. So there's, there's our iridescent Chinese strength. And um, I guess, you know, here's my, here's my Chinese money cat. So, uh, Eight and money and strength all go together, I guess. Um, there's a strength for the Tarot Illuminati. Um, again, we've got uh, we've got our girl with the the lion, and um, the notable imagery in it is that a lot of the times, like um, you know, when we picture strength, we're picturing you know a big muscle man. But the 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 message of this card is, you know, we've got a very delicate looking woman and she's you know putting her putting her hand in the mouth of a lion and she's not doing it from brute strength she's doing it um, uh, by a, a more gentle strength um, Santa Muerte uh, we've got we still have I guess it's a balance between the two um, two interpretations of strength or maybe it's even the the other interpretation, you know, obviously a Lucero, I think I said that right. Um, a Lucero wrestler is, um, is a strong man and wrestles for a living. And here he's wrestling with the lion. So that, that, uh, seems to denote a more brute strength. Um, again, with the Egyptian tarot, we have, uh, we have a woman again, um, Coer it does, it, I don't know. It's hard to tell if she's like coercing the lion to, to go along with her or if she's uh, forcing him. But either way, she's she's got her hands in the lion's mouth. Um, again, with Yukioe, we have a maiden who looks like she's coercing the, the, the lion. And with, with the patch tarot, um, they made a lot of changes um, to the tarot deck. Um, they called this passion. Um, so again, you've got the imagery of the lion and the, the lady, but, um, they've completely put a different spin on it. So, uh, some decks interchange strength and justice, but for our familiar lessons, uh, strength is eight and justice is 11 because we're going by the uh, traditional rider weight. Um, above ladies, uh, lady strength head is the... Okay, I'm going to try and pronounce this. I've seen it only. I've never seen it pronounced. Um, lem lemniscate? Is that it? I don't know. It's, uh, in any case, we're talking about the, um, the, the, sideways, the sideways eight of infinity um, on, uh, on, her, on her head. Um, and it says we've also seen that adorned on the magician's head. Um, I don't know if you guys want me to go digging in my, uh, digging in my decks for, for the magician, but, um, maybe I can find them real quick. The uh, chances are pretty slim. Um, but I can take a second. Ah, here he is. Found him. So there he is. There's the magician with the lemniscate above his head. Um, uh, she's opening the lion's mouth like this is nothing new or difficult for her. For a consciousness that is aware of eternity above it, there are no obstacles, nor can there be any resistance, which is from the tarot revealed. Yeah, it's by Eden Gray, but it, it's not this book, but it's a one by the same author. Um, uh, 
the irony of the card is that strength is not depicted as a muscle man. It's a delicate woman with a flowing robe and flowers in her hair, reaching into a lion's mouth. This indicates we're not talking about brute strength, but a strength that can only come from deep within. The maiden demonstrates that she's used her calm, kind, and gentle power to tame the ferocious beast and formed a trusting bond with it. This is a totally different power from the chariot, which tames through overpowering and raw control. Um, one might also say that strength is the feminine expression of the chariot, and the chariot is the male um, expression of strength. Um, her white robes indicate purity of spirit, our higher selves. Her crown and belt of flowers indicate beautiful expression of nature and union of desires, which is so strong that unconscious forces bow before it. She represents the separation of lower, grosser, unrefined parts of ourselves so that we can purify them and raise them to a higher vibration in order to integrate them into our, self, into our lives in a healthy way. So that um, notice that she's not vanquishing she's taming so um generally if you were to um uh, uh try and if you were trying to try and run from or kill or destroy your more base um emotions and drives as a human being um they tend to come out worse in the opposite direction so um this card is about uh, gently welcoming in those um, those more uh, primal uh, uh, urges and stuff uh, than actually trying to defeat them um, so that you can incorporate it uh, incorporate it into your being and and live with it because like nobody's nobody's perfect so if you if you try and you know deny that then you're probably the least perfect out of anyone. Um, so it represents spiritual power overcoming material power, spiritual strength over animal desires, love over hate, um, inner processes of taming the wild or ferocious beast inside, befriending it and integrating it, strength and courage of conviction, uh, be prepared to face any threat head on with graceful determination. Sometimes you must be prepared to walk away, forgive and forget, or accept someone needs space. Um, sometimes strength is, you know, picking yourself up and walking away when, when, you know, things aren't working. Um, there's a nobility in swimming upstream, but once it gets to a certain point, you just got to go with it. Um, I think, uh, uh, Buddhists call it non-striving, um, so you're still working hard and you're still doing what you have to do, but you're not killing yourself to get it done. Um, it seems like sometimes in Western um, culture that there's like this uh, nobility in working yourself to death or to the bone or like, you know, always working and always being on the go. But, you know, you have to be strong to say, nah, <laughs> I'm, I'm taking a recovery time. Um, taking a calm approach to anger or frustration, cool, calm control of your emotions. Um, sometimes, well, a lot of the times I wish I could do this. Um, uh, I wish I had the poise of, say, like a samurai um, getting into our Yukioe. Um, I wish I had the poise of a, a samurai to laugh off some of the really messed up things that people can do or say and just, you know, you know, keep your head high, shake it off, and keep going. Um, uh, self-awareness and acceptance of the self and others, both flaws and perfections, leads to solutions. So um, only once you identify the issue can you actually solve it. Um, compassion, the ability to see nuance in both sides of a situation, gentle guidance, understanding, inner resolve. You have the tools within you to meet any challenge head on with class and grace. Force of character, spiritual courage, acknowledging the beast within gives us access to its powers so i mean once once you get that lion on your side then i mean that's where you want it to be right um and i thought it would be really interesting to look at the little white book for some of these um especially the santa muerte the ukiyo-e 
and the um, Egyptian tarot because these ones um, tend to veer off from the um, traditional rider weight. So I thought it would be interesting to look at what their white books have to say. Um, just because, um, you know, more interpretations, right? Now, um, I, I looked into the Egyptian one and it was, it, it, there was no real um, description of, you know, who this woman is or what she's doing. Um, it just was the basic rider weight um, description of, um, I think it was, uh, or not necessarily the basic rider weight, but just what you would think. Um, in the divine world, it represents the principle of every form of strength. Um, in, in the intellectual world, it represents moral strength. Physical world is organic strength, courage, strength, energy, self-mastery, self-control, everything we've already talked about. Um, in the yukioi, it's kind of interesting to get into um, uh, uh, more of the symbology. There she is. So... A little bit more anyway um, it gets into the um, the soft strength versus um, the hard strength um, so uh, an elaborately dressed woman gently holds a snow lion the animal that traditionally oops let's get her in the frame <laughs> uh, the animal that traditionally guards the shrines of Japan a cherry tree blossoms in harmony with youth and beauty of the woman gentle the gentle lady does not overcome the lion using force by her calm assertive demeanor she persuades it to be a servant to humanity rather than a destructive force strength can be said to be the feminine side of the chariot once again we see that physical strength is often surp surpassed by skill whereas the warrior of the chariot used ingenuity to overcome demons the lady of strength uses intuitive sympathy with the lion to create a useful link with um, animal force so again that's pretty much it's pretty in tune with the um, the rider weight and then let me just find the uh, Santa Muerte there she is and uh, interest of interesting note the um, both the, uh, the Yukioi and the Egyptian tarot um, are um, the um, the Thoth Toth Thoth Thoth the Thoth Tarot um, of Crawley, um, they have his numbers of um, uh, strength being 11 and justice being 8. Uh, but we're looking at strength today, so that's what we're looking at regardless of the number. Um, and on that note, maybe I shouldn't be so um, mad at the Patch Tarot. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, um, so there is the strength for Santa Muerte. Um, a new creative beginning or a new injection of energy will be guaranteed to those who do not renounce the fight and the challenge, carried forward by their own will and embracing their own projects with conviction, uh, courage, sincerity, and ownership. There is no sense in suffocating the animal energy in us, but rather than sub sublimate it, control it with determination and channel it the right way. An excess of this could cause arrogance and possessiveness in the worst cases, repression, hard-headedness and egoism on the contrary when it is absence staticity insecurity and weakness so i again like we're that's that's along the same lines but it seems to be more of a forceful type of strength um cool so that's that let's get into the um the pips so we'll start with wands um and the wands of uh, my iridescent um, rider weight are very similar to the wands of the um, tarot illuminati so we'll just look at them as the um, the standard here uh, so the wands represent sudden developments messages and lots going on at once. It can be chaotic, but I guess that depends how you look at it. Um, many options, many ideas, and you have to act fast. Um, haste, speed, activity, nearing a goal, movement, but nothing is finalized, sudden intuition, and relative ease. So um, it's pretty pretty obvious by what's on the card um, that you got um, the arrows flying through the air or the wands can be seen like arrows flying through the air, like, whoa, like sun dynamic energy. And that seems to um, 
that seems to align um, perfectly with the um, the uh, the image or the um, the the um, element of fire, um, which the wands represent. So the swords are next. Oh wait, let's um yeah, let's check out the UQOA and see what UQOA is talking about. Um, with the wand. So the um, one of the reasons that I wanted to get into the UQOA and the Egyptian tarot is just simply because the cards themselves are just eight wands. So uh, when reading this, I like I wouldn't be able to tell or use intuition with it at all. I if I don't know the cards, I don't know, I don't have a clue what this means. So with this deck particularly, what's interesting is that you have to go by the flowers and the birds and the little things in the background in order to interpret them. So um, I thought that would be um, kind of interesting. Oh, I just lost it too. Oh, I'm sorry, guys. Eek. I just had the interpretation. Um, there it is. There it is. Sorry. Bear with me. It's live. Um, okay, so the Eight of Wands. Uh, a fledgling bird wings over a patch of morning glories. Um, Due to its short life, the morning glory is the Japanese flower of mortality. Even as the day dawns and a bird first flies, time is passing quickly, and soon the bird will be teaching her own offspring to fly. So that's pretty interesting that they're um, they're talking about time flies, and you know um, you got to make quick moves. So that's very very much in tune with the um, the rider weight. Um, Swift activity, sudden progress or movement, speed, hastily made decisions, too rapid advancement. So um, I guess in a, in a reading or uh, in a reading, you would really have to um, uh, go by the, the cards around it um, to see, to, to really gauge what, uh, what kind of um, actions should be taken. So, okay, wands. Um, Wow, yeah, this this book really like I need an accompanying book because there seems to be a lot um, lacking with this um, with this um, deck. So um, the Eight of Wands, the shoot of the papyrus, mobility, ambition, potential. So I guess that's the papyrus flower. Um, kind of interesting how you have the morning glory. Uh, representing um, um, the ephemeral, I guess, and the papyrus also representing the same um, the same thing. And with Santa Muerte, um, this is pretty. Oh, whoops, not that one. Oh, wow! This imagery is just so dope. Like Fabio Listriani did such an amazing job with this drawing. And I'm sorry I don't have a webcam. Um, this is, I'm pretty DIY kind of, let's just do this. Don't worry about how it's going to happen. <laughs> um, okay, so I knew there was something I forgot to do before, which was get my bookmarks happening I'm sorry guys um, next time I promise it's a it's a it's a work in progress right um, as we all are okay so ready so with the eight um, the eight of wands is probably the fastest and most dynamic card of the suit its energy brings with it great transformations hope and changes projected towards the future but also unexpected or risky transfers. Only a change in direction could slow this down, causing some regret, uncertainty, or moderately adverse, adverse period. Cool. So that's right in tune with that, too. Um, there were a couple cards with the, um, uh, the Santa Muerte that, uh, that were completely <laughs> different from the rider weight. So that's, uh, that's kind of why I'm, uh, why I'm doing this. So... 
Oh, and this is pretty rad. Um, oh, I'm not going to go into the big giant book, book of patch. But yeah, the, the patch tarot is pretty different as well. That's pretty rad, eh? Oh. Gotta love that eye of raw. That's so, so sick. The imagery is so neat. Um, another really interesting thing about the, uh, the patch tarot is that they added, they added some, uh, major arcana on top of, um, the, uh, the world. Um, so they called it the holy arcana. And so they expanded the, um, the major arcana to, uh, to encompass the universe. So it's just like, uh, pretty, pretty deep. Um, okay, so the Eight of Wands, with the, equality, with the quality of moving fast, the Eight of Wands embodies a sudden shift or ra rapid change in one's flow or direction, specifically one that happens very quickly as a result of new awareness shining intensely in the mind. There are no flames, for the light is so fast that it explodes straight to electricity, which manifests as particles of the physical reality, Thus, describing a sudden change of awareness leads directly to new action. Wow, that's, picture's pretty rad. Like, I like that um, explosive electric quality, which also um, goes back to uh, representing fire. Um, when a flash of awareness ignites your mind and you realize something different or new about reality is the perfect time to bring that new consciousness into full creative force. Do not sit idly by and let the realization fade grounded in reality and take the action you've been, been stricken with to manifest your dreams. So again, it looks like the, um, the bottom line with the eight of ones is just quick messages, quick action. You got to get on it. You got to act quick. Um, kind of reminds me of like, say a, um, a job offer that uh, that won't that won't last. So hop on it. All right. So what do we got next? The swords. Um, this yeah. This is a pretty interesting looking card. Um, there we go. Um. Indecision, the ability, inability to move in a situation, it's easier to stalemate. Is it easier to stalemate than make a move? Um, a misguided struggle, um, or playing victim. Uh, no one will rescue you. Self-imposed powerlessness, constriction, closed mind. You must focus. So, um, one interesting thing about this card, um, in the Rider Way, anyway, is. Um, the maiden is, you know, at least in the Illuminati, she looks like confused and um, worried. But if you look at it, um, she's surrounded by swords and tied up by like a, a like rope or even these, um, even these, these bound, binds here are very loose. Plus she's surrounded by swords. She could get out of this situation easily. Is she choosing not to? not entirely sure so um again that's um uh, um it's a uh it seems like a uh, a hint to look inside yourself for the answers and stop avoiding um because i mean like just look at it like you can get those are situations that you could easily get out of um if you just look around take the time to look around and see See what's see what you can use at your feet. Um, again, the uh, the Santa Muerte in this case it borrows heavily from the um, the Rider Weight, which is pretty awesome. Um, ooh, the um, Eight of Swords, self administered confusion is what the Eight of Swords represents. Actually, it's kind of interesting that the Eight of Swords is, the imagery from the Eight of Swords is more uh, more in tune with the Eight of Wands um, in, uh, in the traditional Rider Waite compared with the, um, the Santa Muerte. Um, uh, Self-administered confusion is what the Eight of Swords represents by the very nature of the mind collapsing in, a, in upon itself. Um, this is 
the duel between mental structure and mental freedom commonly experiences the, du the duality between the left and right brain hemispheres when they are not in sync. The patch, oh, whoops, <laughs> I'm reading from Patch Tarot. That was pretty dumb. Sorry, guys. Oh my gosh. Gotta love life. Um, all right, sorry about that. <laughs> I guess we'll, we'll look at that in a sec. Um, actually, may as well do it now that uh, I have the page. I'm sorry, guys. That was pretty dumb. There we go. Um, what's interesting about this sword as well um, in Patch is that there's, there's two swords there in real life, but he's not surrounded. The other ones are kind of imaginary, and they're attacking him, but they're not, they don't really exist. Um, so it, it's more, um, he's worried a lot about what's going on, but there's really not much reason. He's, he's in a situation he can easily get out of. His hands are free, he could untie the blindfold. Um, uh, the patch is blindfolded, and yet he is unable to see a way out of his chaos. And yet the pathway was right in front of him. If he could escape this juxt his juxtaposed thoughts, he would see a path before him as clear. Your mind can be a very unstable place, and this card typifies the mind which has reached its flipping point of chaos. Here, the duality between um, your logical thinking mind and your free thinking an open, sorry, <laughs> an open mind clashes. Here thoughts do not balance each other, but instead create struggle by their dualistic and opposite natures. Unifying these thoughts does not appear simple, but if you can relax into your meditation long enough, you might see how everything lines up and the way out becomes clear. So sorry for that confusion. Um, all right, so... The, uh, the Santa Muerte book tends to not tell you on the actual page if you're looking at wands or pentacles or what. It doesn't tell you the suit, so you have to double check the suit by flipping to the front of the suit and then figuring it out. Okay, so let's try this again. So again, the, uh, the swords tend to um, recall the... Um, the wands more so than anything. So uh, this represents the quiet before the storm, the balance of opposites destined to be brief and to explode with violence and thunder. The eight of swords is stability with its stability risks causing frustration by delaying the conflict that needs to be externalized. Therefore, we need to find the way to rationally bring this to the surface without fearing the necessary transformations. Do not be afraid, even if it is necessary to reconsider your ideas, the commitments undertaken or the voices made, the choices made, they are causing a continual internal storm. So um, interesting that this has to do with action. Um, it looks like it's talking about making that decision and having some sort of action, just like this lady in the um, traditional rider weight should like piss or get off the pot. Like obviously if she does nothing, she's going to stay trapped. So, um, so this card seems to be um, her in the moments w before she makes the decision and that, the decision is begging to be made. So that's kind of interesting um, interpretation. Um, so let's look at the uh, Egyptian swords and see what they represent. Um, the teeth of Sobek, inner crisis, censorship, discomfort, fault. So, okay, cool, but what Sobek and what does he represent? I guess he's an alligator? Or do they have crocodiles in the mouth? Man, I just, I love Egyptian mythology, but I don't know enough about it to be able to read these properly. So, I mean, cool imagery. And uh, nice to meet you, Sobek, but I wish I knew a little bit more about you. 
Um, and then uh, UQOE. Oh, geez, I love this imagery. Look at these dope samurai swords. My birthday's coming up on Halloween in just like 10 months time. So if you love me, buy me like a legit samurai sword with Bitcoin. Um, okay, so the eight of swords, the rhododendron, isn't that cool? So that is a rhododendron. Um, the rhododendron is a Japanese symbol of happy retirement. However, on the eight of swords, ominous clouds lower over evergreens. Two crossed swords threaten conflict. Crisis, calamity, conflict, domination, imprisonment, turmoil, bad news, criticism, sickness. Oh God, that doesn't, that doesn't sound very good. It doesn't, it doesn't really reference much about um, immobility and indecision or stalemate. So uh, again, kind of interesting that it's uh, not at all has anything to do with uh, the ride or weight. And we've already talked about patch, cool. Moving right along to the cups. All right. Um, the cups are really interesting. Um, I like I like the idea of this because um, if you're anything, if you're anything like me, you might be on this tip. So, all right. So in this card, we've got. Ah, sorry, I'm still getting used to the. The backwards um, screen so okay so in this we've got um, a guy looking really tired and weary and walking away from what looks like full cups um, success abandoned seeking something greater which um, could very well be balance um, outgrowing your old life shedding a skin transition there's um, Thinking that there's more to life, a reevaluation of priorities. Life keeps moving, and so must we. And taking a new route. Um, one thing that um, I thought was interesting in the description of the um, the drawing is that um, there could very well be um, four cups on either side, but it's not depicted that way. It's depicted as five and three, which indicates um, imbalance. So that's why. Um, on the cheat sheet, I said, you know, seeking something greater, like balance, because uh, though uh, though this person is um, confronted with what seems to be an abundance, it's still off balance. There's something not quite right about it. And so if there isn't something quite right, keep searching for your balance and your, um, your happy place. Um, okay. Let's check out the Santa Muerte. Let's get the right book this time for Santa Muerte Tarot. Um, cool. And this is a really interesting um, drawing as well um, for Santa Muerte. Um, there are cups overflowing, but it looks like they're overflowing only because um, there's an imbalance. If uh, if her head was tipped a little further back or more balanced, then they wouldn't be spilling over. Um, oh, it's interesting. Wait, the quiet before the storm. Uh oh. Oh, I'm reading the swords instead of the cups. My bad, guys. So. Like I said, flipping through this book is a little bit of a pain in the keister because they don't have on each page, they don't tell you what suit you're looking at. So you just got to keep flipping until you double check, triple check, make sure that your familiar friends aren't getting a bad interpretation. Okay, so chalices. All right, so a new moment of balance that, although connected to emotions and feelings, leaves some doubt as to its duration. This is probably precarious stability. If not faced in a serene and satisfying manner, it may mutate into a difficult situation through laziness, self-isolation, or fear of possible delusions. Um, 
accept your actual situation and the possible failures and try to be receptive and disposed towards the change of equilibrium destined in any case to mutate. So um, kind of interesting, um, definitely not the, um, the rider weight interpretation, um, but um, it, interesting that the rider weight talks about leaving what you have to seek balance and this is about accepting the situation to find the balance. So balance is still a theme, but um, uh, like balance still being a theme, but just a different, uh, completely different interpretation. Um, so uh, on to the Egyptian tarot. And because I'm... Um, I'm fascinated with Egyptian art and mythology, but I really don't know much about it. Um, and unfortunately, while I'm in school, I don't have any time to study. So please forgive me, um, Egyptian history buffs and symbology buffs. Um, so eight, the papyrus shoot. Again, we have a papyrus shoot. Um, arrested ripening illusions, fantasies, improbability. So. Uh, yeah, not really seeing how it um, connects with the Rider Waite or any of the other ones. Um, yeah, the papyrus shoot was, the papyrus shoot, I thought maybe I was reading the wrong one again, but this, um, or the same one again, but they're both the papyrus shoot. Oh man, cool imagery, but I don't know. I don't know if I'd be doing much reading with this deck. Um, QA. All right. Wait, no, we're on cups, not swords. Sorry, guys. There we go. Sorry about that. There we go. Oh, there he is. Duck. Absolutely love ducks. Um, the duck, like the crane, was considered a sign of marital fidelity and happiness. Here the duck is swimming away from us along the bank of a barren island. Um, it says disappointment, abandonment of previous plans, shyness, modesty, abandoned success. So this is kind of interesting. Um, success abandoned is still um, an interpretation, and you can tell because the duck is actually swimming away. So that's very, um, very right or wait. Um, and then patch, patch again, same, same imagery. It looks like this time he's abandoning the five cups to, to um, pursue his dream of the three cups in the sky. All right, and last but not least, the pentacles. There we go. Um, hard work, focus on the task at hand. You will get out what you put in. Shifting gears, apprenticeship, employment, commission to come. Focus on skills or development. Your best work is a labor of love, but is it too easy? Um, whenever I see this one, I always think of the card, um, this one here, uh, I think of the card of the uh, apprentice because with um, the complete guide to tarot, um, they talk about, um, in this card particularly, uh, with this imagery, it reminds me, it says, um, sometimes your skill stays in the apprentice stage. And I remember that part because this uh, is my shredded book. Um, so um, this is, yeah, the learning a new skill, um, taking it to the next level, kind of the higher octave of four. Um, all right, checking out the Santa Muerte. Okay. 
again, we've got um, a lady with a crown. Um, and it looks like, yeah, she's got, it looks like the eight are the discs made by the, um, the layers of and the roses in her hair. Um, the eight of pentacles brings us an ideal situation of balance of accumulation and prosperity, luxuriant garden where energies flow harmoniously. However, this too perfect situation that you have in your hands could change and unbalance itself, even rotting and blocking itself because of greed, bad advice, or meanness. There can never be enough prudence. Therefore, face a situation with careful choices and evaluations, also accepting advice from people you trust. Um, yeah, well, I mean, I guess. Oh, interesting. She's she's making a meditation hand. We were doing um, those meditations. We were putting our hands in different positions to meditate um, in yoga, in my yoga class. And different hand positions were representative of different energies. Um, so um, I guess... It seems like Santa Muerte, the Santa Muerte Tarot is all about balance and all of the eights are about balance and the, the swords represent the calm before the storm balance. Um, and the, these two ladies have a lot to do with balance as well. Um, interesting. And let's see what the Egyptian Tarot is talking about. Pentacles, um, the sacred tree, stabilities, uh, manual or commercial ability, professional capacity. Okay, sacred tree. We don't know what plant. Um, but again, balance is the name of the game. Uh, Yukioe. Let's see what this plant is talking about. Bright red flowers open in the hot summer sun. Summer is the season of steady growth and development. Um, apprenticeship, craftsmanship, mental attitude, candor, modesty, and personal effort. Oh, man, I was kind of hoping they would tell me what, uh, what flower it was and why the significance. But again, apprenticeship is definitely part of the game. Um, and here we go with Patch Tarot. Looks like someone is nurturing their garden, getting a bit of the old meditation in, sitting in the sun. Um, let me just grab the book and we'll, we'll check it out, get, get a little more in depth about it. The seeds that were planted in the previous card begin to grow and develop into flowers. Now is a very critical time as patch, oh, oh it's kind of got glued a little bit there. As patch sits with his new creations, he meditates and provides loving care, making certain they have just the right amount of water and sun. The eight of discs invites you to take special care of all aspects of your life. You have planted the seeds in the past and now they are growing. Um, again, that's, um, that can be related to apprenticeship as well, because, um, you know, if you're in an apprenticeship stage, then you've already started. Um, excuse me, you don't get to be an apprentice just by uh, walking through the door. You have to have some skill. Um, so it looks like with, uh, with Patch here and being, um, nurturing his garden, he's, um, He's well on the way to being that skilled master, but not quite yet. Um, this early stage of sprouting is a very important time to, to tend to the garden of your heart. Make sure all your projects and relationships are nurtured and cared for so that they can grow and blossom into the bright and beautiful creations you always intended them to be. So, all right, that is all of the eights and strength. So... Let's take them out and look at them. 
another another big uh, fan, an, another uh, uh, thing that makes me happy about the Egyptian tarot is they completely misspelled strength there. Kind of love that because um, I guess not a lot of people would have uh, would have even noticed. Um, but a nerd like me, nothing escapes me. Um, just pulling out all the strength cards. Um, there we go. So that's all of them. So we went through all of these today. <laughs> Thanks a lot for bearing with me. Um, I will look forward to the next session. Uh, look forward to more questions. Maybe you got um, more questions you can post underneath the video when it's done and we can have a good um, talk about um, different cards, different meanings, um, different interpretations. So um, thanks for joining me on, um, on this version of uh, Familiar. And I'm going to be in school. I might be doing countless 14-hour days. So I will let you know through the group or through the Twitter uh, when you can expect um, the next uh, session. So thanks for joining me, and I will see you next time.